What's happening guys, welcome to Albion Games UK, my name is Craig and we've got a little bit of the Dragon's Dogma demo here for you today, uh, just going to be giving you a bit of my opinion on it, show you some of the gameplay, character creation and that stuff. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, here we go. Uh, I'm actually really looking forward to this game I have to say, uh, I pre-ordered it a while ago just after looking at the, the trailer for it, but the, the demo, it, it probably doesn't give it the biggest general sort of idea of what the game's going to be like, uh, there's not much RPG elements in it, but it certainly gives you a good idea of the gameplay um, and doesn't really hint much at the story, but it gives you a really, really close look at the character creation, which is a lot of fun. Um, so here we go, we're just coming into sort of the first part of the demo, this is the prologue part, um, you have to play as the character that you didn't create, uh, just a sort of generic uh, character you've been seeing in the trailers. And you got a giant dragon here breathing fire, which is pretty damn cool. Um, so yeah, uh, there's a lot of really cool aspects to this game, I have to say. None of it's sort of particularly brand new, I think it's all sort of been done in, in most games before, but um, as you can see, the, the combat's fairly standard, but it, it really feels really nice when you're, when you're playing it. Um, and particularly when you see your companions here, obviously you get a little cuts in here, a cool little move. And this actually occurs quite frequently. Um, and it all stems from this uh, pawn system in the game. Now, the pawns are essentially your companions. Um, as you can see here, they're warping out of nowhere from these little rift stones. Um, obviously, these are going to be a common occurrence but uh, throughout the game. But, um, yeah, so you, you play with a lot of companions, and I, I really think it's going to play a big part in the game. Um, uh, not only in the, the mechanic itself, but I think in the story. Um, when you see a guy here uh, getting ripped apart by this big lion, goat, snake thing. Um, so this is, again, this is the first part of the demo. Um, basically you get to play sort of sword and shield combat, uh, fighting some little enemies, and then you've got your final boss here at the end, which is this big lion thing. Um, and obviously, as you can see here, you can climb up onto the enemies. Now this has been done in games before, obviously, but I think it just sort of adds another mechanic to the gameplay that you don't see in a lot of sort of RPGs here now and it just adds another dimension really and makes it that bit more fun um, obviously the, the sort of main bosses as you can see are quite difficult this has obviously been cut down uh, just to sort of display the, the gameplay the fights normally last a, a decent length of time and the, uh, the combat itself, um, talking about sort of the main character, not your companions, it's probably comparable to something like uh, Dragon Age, where you can sort of hit um, the left trigger, a uh, uh, left bumper, a right bumper, and you can sort of, for the shield guy, left bumper allows you to use shield attacks, so you could like um, drop people in or knock them back, and your uh, right bumper gives you a, um, a range of weapon attacks. We've got a little sort of cutscene here at the end of the, the prologue, uh, just sort of teasing you as to the main story. Now, I don't know if this is actually going to be um, part of your story or if it's just been made up for the, the demo itself. So now, coming up here, we're going to look at the character creation system, which I have to say uh, I really enjoyed. Um, it's, it's probably not the most in-depth system that you're going to see. Um, but it's certainly detailed enough to basically create any character you want. Obviously you're starting off with the gender, male, female, you choose your basic uh, setup and then you can go on and make it more detailed. But I mean I really, I don't think it's as maybe as detailed as Likes of Oblivion, but it's certainly more detailed than Skyrim. Um, you start off with presets as you can see here, um, a load of different sort of generic presets that you'll get to have a look at and, and pick one of these to begin with um, just to sort of as start off as a base just kind of like you know Skyrim you can you can choose a preset and then you can modify it afterwards um, but obviously as you can see there's a, there's a massive difference between height um, and, and size and build and just general looks of your different characters and just as a sort of example is what you can create I, I can't remember the name of the website but there's a guy who has created literally every character out of the Game of Thrones series now I don't know if you watch Game of Thrones but it's really cool and you get to see all these different characters so as an example obviously you can basically create whatever you want um, so that's just quite how detailed it is. So here you sort of you can select uh, out of a few different voices. I think it, it adds something interesting to it by allowing you to ch change your voice. I think because you know not every game you do get that option, and it, it just personalizes that bit 
extra for you, you know. So obviously I've started off with a preset here and going on you can change uh, more advanced stuff so you've got your faces, hairstyles, eyes and, and, and etc. Um, so you can, you can pick off most sections have you know at least 50 different options. Um, it's funny because they actually mix in the hair styles of the male in with the female which is quite funny so you can have a, a male with a really long sort of curly hairstyle make him look a bit girly and stuff. Um, but you know, each day is on. If that's what you want to do, you can do that. Um, so yeah, looking at the hairstyles, once you pitch your hairstyles in each section, you can go into more detail by pressing X. You can change the color, um, and different sections will give you different options. But also the hairstyle, you can change the color. Eyes, you can change the color, the height, um, the width, um, sort of scale, the positioning of it, basically. And you can you can change it as, as much as you want to you know you could basically just pick the preset go for it and, and start or you could even just use the the standard one that you're given at the very beginning and sort of just do it like Mass Effect and just play that character you know um, but like I said you've got the eyes here so that you, another like 50 or so um, and then you can go in and change it and make it more detailed you can change the color of you know however many colors are there um, and you can really, really personalize it as much as you want. But I think where it shines here is the, the body customization. So you've got a massive array in height. You can basically go from being a tiny guy all the way up to some huge guy. And then you can change the weight as well from really skinny to really heavy. So you can make some big, huge fat guy if you really wanted to. And then you can change uh, musculature as well. So you can be stronger, look more muscly or look less, more skinny and then you can go in and change each particular body part you can change the torso you can change the arms and legs um, and it all basically allows you to completely customize your character essentially um, and just makes you more involved in the character that you create and I, I genuinely think a, a good character creation system is the first step to having a really good RPG without being able to create a good character you can't have a good RPG as far as I'm concerned and then another little quite kind of cool um, quirk is being able to change your posture and your stance which you just don't see in games nowadays and it really adds that extra bit of detail to your character and then once you've done this you can go and create your pawn your standard pawn that's throughout with you throughout the entire game you can create yourself which I think is awesome so basically, everybody loves Lydia of Skyrim, right? Unless you've killed her or she's trying to kill you or something like that. But you can create your own Lydia, basically. You can create the person that you want to see with you, your entire quest. Make them whoever you want. Whatever they want, you want them to look like, however you want them to, to act, you can create that, you know? Which I think is, is really, really cool. You know, because you can basically have your own personalized Lydia. And you can even call them Lydia if you want. So that's the character creation system. I, obviously, it's it's not the most detailed you're ever going to see in a game, but I think it's more than enough to create the character that you want to play with and to create the companion that you want to play with and really get you started off well uh, for the game. And obviously, something that everyone loves to see in a game, especially people like me, is being able to change the size of the female's breasts. I think they're fairly modest in this particular game. They have to be fairly modest when you compare them to obviously Korean games but you know they have to be and then we move on to the final part of the demo which is using your created characters to play a small mission just like sort of the, the prologue part of the of the demo but um, out in the open um, again sort of fighting minor characters as well as fighting the boss um, you get a good idea of sort of the scope of the main game. Um, uh, you get to play with a different style of character. Um, he's obviously sort of the rogue type as opposed to the sword and shield character that you play in the prologue. Um, so you've got your bows, you've got a different sort of selection of uh, attacks, just like your, your sword and shield um, sort of ranged bow attacks as well as your dual wield. Um, weapon attacks as you can see here and, and they're all pretty cool obviously we don't have much idea or well, I don't have much idea of how these are going to progress throughout the game because I haven't really looked into it and I don't really want to know before I play it um, but certainly the, the, the attacks that you see in this are more than adequate to take on the foes that you've been given and I think it'll be fun to see how these attacks develop obviously 
your companions can buff your attacks as you can see here my weapons are glowing so I can use fire attacks or my weapons do fire damage when I attack this thing um, and like I said before in the prologue you can sort of obviously you can climb up on these the bosses and it just adds an extra sort of dimension to your to your fights and especially when you're fighting a, a flying character like this it's you know it takes you up off the ground it takes you around and it just adds that bit extra sort of disorientation to it um, and as you can see here you actually I ran out of stamina there which is another cool thing and it's similar to like say you know Dark Souls where your stamina plays a key part in how you fight and I don't particularly think that as you're fighting on the ground it really runs out that quickly but I think when you're climbing up on enemies which will be a common occurrence in a boss fight um, you will run out of stamina quickly and at the end here I completely just destroy this griffin thing it just for some reason he just died so quickly at the end I think all my guys were like attacking and just murdering him at the end of it um, but yeah so that that ended my part of this part of the demo very quickly um, it just sort of really managed to cut through the boss very very quickly but you don't have to fight the boss straight away you don't have to just go and kill him instantly like I did you can actually let it get dark like you can see here you can sit out of the battle for a little bit not let it attack you or not attack yet and then you can watch as the, the day night cycle runs and what a different game when it gets dark now you don't get to see sort of like going into the forest and getting attacked by hundreds of creatures but even just sort of the, the graphics and the actual fight for some reason seem to be much more difficult in the dark I don't know if it was just me just because you literally can't see anything other than when things are exploding around you or the things on fire you can't see it so it makes it much more difficult but I really I really got my butt kicked when I was fighting in the dark I had to use this guy's green health tree thing to keep me alive for most of it because the griffin just kept coming out of nowhere and smashing me into the ground but you know it again it's not something you really see in games and it's a thing they're really focusing on in this game is the difference between night and day and that you really don't want to be fighting or walking around out in the night time which I just think is a really cool thing to see um, so yeah eventually get this thing down and one of my companions just barbecues it and then dies so that's the end of it basically um, so yeah I, I have to say I'm, I'm really looking forward to this game um, go out and try the demo um, let me know what you think of it let me know what you think of my video uh, comment, rate and subscribe and, and keep watching. Thanks guys, I'll see you soon.